This is a Land Cruiser. Land Cruisers are used to the spotlight, and it's well-deserved. They've conquered every continent. Yes, even that one. They're known for their legendary toughness and almost unexplainable longevity. When Toyota got around to going after the global market, their corporate strategy was actually called the Land Cruiser Strategy. But in that strategy lies one of the craziest automotive stories I have ever stumbled across. And what's amazing about it is almost nobody's heard of it. Several early attempts of the Land Cruiser strategy actually failed. And it wasn't the Land Cruiser that eventually saved the day. It was another truck, a truck Toyota Pirates don't even really like. This is a wild story. It's a story about a truck that should have never existed yet somehow became the flag bearer for an entire country, building its own automotive legacy. It's the story of how a fledgling car company learned to grow up and conquer the world. This is the story of the Toyota Bandaranchi. So I actually own one of these trucks, and when I bought it, I just bought it because I thought it would be an interesting project truck. It was in pretty good shape, but it still had definitely some things broken, and I'm a pretty mediocre mechanic, but it felt like something that I could handle. So I pretty much jumped on it, and then I started doing research on the internet. I was trying to find parts, and I was amazed at how useless the internet was when you were trying to search for Ban Ranchies. They, uh, there was just hardly any information out there. There was hardly anything on its history. There's like the skeleton of a story, but you could always tell that there was a bunch more. So I just kind of jumped into the rabbit hole and after spending about, I'd say probably about 50 hours of research on these vehicles, the story started to come together. So why haven't you heard of the Bandy? Well, first of all, they weren't made for us. They were made for the notoriously tough roads and wild environments of Brazil to serve a Portuguese speaking population where the name Bandeiranchi means flag bearer, which was synonymous with the name given to early explorers and slavers in Brazil. So the story of the Bandaranchi is one of guts and fortitude. This vehicle had to overcome almost impossible odds to even exist. Okay, so here's the automotive landscape in 1958. Toyota's total production was 78,856 vehicles, all in Japanese factories. That same year, Ford Motor Company is producing its 50 millionth vehicle, and Chevrolet retained the annual production title, producing 1.2 million vehicles in that one year. Toyota was a tiny car company, almost nobody had heard of, kind of like this YouTube channel. So feel free to hit the like button and subscribe to help us out. So in this situation, what does the underdog Toyota do? Toyota decided to chase underserved global markets in a desperate effort to find global relevance. Toyota started importing Land Cruisers to Brazil. So they were importing FJ25s that were actually in pieces and boxes. These kits were called CKDs or complete knockdowns. They were brought over on a ship and then they stuck them in a warehouse and they would assemble them. Believe it or not, these Land Cruisers were assembled in an old Land Rover facility because Land Rover had decided to give up on the Brazilian market. So Toyota's sitting there thinking, what could go wrong? The Brazilian government decided to nationalize the production of vehicles for Brazil, meaning that every single part to a vehicle had to be produced in Brazil in a Brazilian factory full of Brazilian employees. The Land Cruiser was doomed in Brazil, and Toyota was at a crazy crossroads. They could run home, just like Land Rover had, or they could try to unwind a seemingly impossible barrier of entry. There was a really obvious need for a tough passenger 4x4 in the rugged Brazilian backcountry. They had mining operations back there, they had ag workers, but they, and they had these notoriously hard dirt roads. In fact, they had these things called lambdas, which are famous, which is literally just these giant speed bumps they made everywhere because it's cheaper to put speed bumps everywhere than to hire a bunch of police. But yeah, their roads were just nightmares. They needed vehicles like this, but Toyota had no factory. 
for Toyota to even have a chance, they were going to have to build from the ground up, and they were going to have to compete against a company called Willys Overland that was making Jeeps in Brazil since 1953. So they had a seven year head start. And let's admit it, it wouldn't be a very good Toyota story if we didn't have some way for them to beat a Jeep, right? Anyway, Toyota needed a full-fledged factory for everything. So what did Toyota do? Basically, they went all in. Toyota committed to becoming one of Brazil's long-term auto partners, and then in the process of setting up their production, they really ran into only one major hiccup. They needed a way to get engines. So Toyota found itself needing to find a partner of its own, and they found it in one of the most unlikely places, a Mercedes-Benz engine factory that was making an incredibly durable and torquey engine designed for tractors. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Toyota struck a transition deal with the Brazilian government where they were able to continue to put together land cruisers for a couple years with most of the major parts coming from Japan. This was until 1965, as they scaled up and built out their Brazilian production, becoming the first Toyota production outside of Japan. 1965 saw the last Brazilian assembled land cruiser, and 1966 saw the birth of the Bandaranchi, Brazil's very own branded 40 series 4x4 Toyota and the first Toyota vehicle ever made outside of Japan. By 1968, 100% of production for every Bandy was done in Brazil. To accomplish this feat, Toyota had to relocate an original 700 ton frame press from Japan to Brazil. 700 tons. Just can't even comprehend how you move something like that. This press dated back all the way to the formation of Toyota and was a critical piece of equipment to produce Bandy's legendary all steel frames. So what about this partnership with Mercedes-Benz? So in order to get vehicles to market fast, Toyota needed an engine factory, but they didn't have enough time to build one. There's just too much complexity there. And they couldn't keep shipping them from Japan because of their deal with Brazil, with the Brazilian government. So in one of the weirder deals of automotive history, Toyota made a deal with a Mercedes-Benz engine factory. It was a diesel engine factory that actually made engines for tractors to supply them with engines for the Bandaranchi. To supply them with the OM324 engine. This was a four-cylinder, 3.4 liter engine producing 78 horsepower and a whopping 193 pound-feet of torque. It was made for a tractor, after all. After only a couple years, they upgraded to Mercedes' brand new OM314 engine, and then eventually to the OM364. The 314 engine was declared a watershed moment by Mercedes. This engine was released to the world in great acclaim in 1964. The world's first four-cylinder direct injection diesel engine. This is a long stroke engine that runs at low RPMs and produces a ton of torque. In fact, it produced more torque than any other engine that Toyota used in the 40 series Land Cruisers. These OM Mercedes engines actually powered the Bandaranchi for almost three decades. It was only in 1994 to 2001 that the Bandy actually became an official BJ model because it actually had a Toyota 14B engine that was put in it. Bandys became known for their incredible toughness and durability, and to this day are still sought out by ranchers and inhabitants in the backcountry in Brazil. It actually took till 1980 for Toyota to break even on its massive investment and gamble in Brazil, but this gutsy move taught them how to go after other global markets. This taught them how to play the game. So using what they learned in Brazil, they in turn went after the Asian market and they went after the US market, and basically the rest is history. They climbed the pedestal and eventually became the largest automotive manufacturer in the world. Now even with the change to the Toyota 14B diesel engine in 1994, the Bandaranchi factory was unable to keep up with changing emission regulations and in November of 2001, they actually had to close their doors and halt production. That was the end of a 42 year run of the Bandaranchi. It's just an incredible run. The Bandaranchi did live on though, because it paved the way for Toyota to build additional model factories in Brazil, including a Corolla factory. 
In the Bandy owner's manual, it actually says this. The Toyota Bandaranchi was built to last for many years, producing profits for its owners. I, I don't think car manufacturers talk like that anymore. I like that. With the name Flag Bear on its side, the Bandaranchi powered by a German engine was a vehicle born from a scrappy and young automotive company. To be overwhelming odds, it was a vehicle made to crisscross South America's largest and most wild country. While enriching the lives of its buyers and builders, the Bandy may have started in the shadow of Jeep, but it certainly didn't stay there as it became entwined into the very ethos of Brazil. I still can't believe that Toyota, a Japanese company, achieved the unthinkable in creating a true to its core Brazilian legend while learning how to conquer the global automotive industry.